something stronger. Come on, get in! You built a pickup truck? It's not just any pickup truck, it's the all new 2019 Chevy Silverado. As a kid, I loved Lego. Scratch that, I still do and you should as well. Stop being a doomer adult and buy a Spongebob set. Okay, ignore that. I even have the remains of this Lego Ender Dragon that I can't find the other pieces for. This thing cost my parents both their kidneys to get me. I was a failure of a child. So naturally, a Lego movie of some kind was going to be made. You know, if you forget about any of these. Because realistically, it's a recipe for box office success. And increasing Lego sales in general. Even if the average person thinks that the idea of it is kind of stupid. Now let's go to the beginning of 2014. If you told me that within the next year, people would be up in arms over a licensed animated movie that was effectively a giant advertisement for Lego being snubbed of an easy easily winnable Oscar for Best Animated Feature, I would have probably believed you because I was 10 and very impressionable. But I don't think anyone could have possibly foretold how much of a success story the LEGO movie would be, both financially and in terms of its critical and audience reception. Setting a brand new standard for any film that falls onto the giant toy commercial label, with sharp writing and a heartfelt story that caught everyone off guard. It managed to defy all of the odds and basically everyone's expectations and stood tall as one of, if not the best animated movie of 2014, and arguably one of the best films of the entire year. It's pretty Pretty hard to find people who genuinely disliked the Lego movie, and with it being a huge financial success, it was clear that there was potential for a theatrical Lego film franchise. Fast forward to 2024. The last theatrical Lego movie was a Lego Movie 2 in 2019, which underperformed at the box office and left audiences mostly split in comparison to the unanimous praise of its predecessor. As a result of this, Warner Brothers officially lost the Lego film rights and they were handed to Universal instead, and all subsequent sequels and spin offs to previous films in the franchise were cancelled. And with only murmurs of a third Lego movie being in development, a good five years after the last movie and ten whole years after the franchise began, the future is looking a little bleak. But how the heck did we even get here? What started off as a promising franchise beloved by critics very quickly fell off the face of the earth after two lackluster installments were underperformed at the box office. Why did it turn out like this and were these movies really that bad? Today, seeing as the first LEGO movie is officially ten years old now, I wanted to take a look back at the short-lived LEGO movie franchise and going over its four installments and that one TV show that no one talks about probably, to discern if there was a noticeable drop off in quality and if it really was just as simple as audiences getting tired of them. Also it's a neat excuse for me to finally review these movies for the first time on this channel and maybe also clutch powers. <laughs> Despite the rather bold title, I think all of you know that this isn't the first LEGO movie by a long shot. Clutch Powers, my beloved. There is no relation to my actual points here, I just wanted to mention that. Anyway, the LEGO movie first released in 2014, and to this day, it's still one of my favourite movies ever. There is a lot to love about the first LEGO movie that's been said already, given it, again, has been 10 entire years, but before release, a lot of people were pretty sceptical, and many outright said the movie was gonna suck. And I mean, I don't blame these people. On the surface, the movie just looked like a giant ad for LEGO, and when people get that impression, it's hard to imagine that the actual actual movie is any real effort placed into it. People's expectations were not high for the LEGO movie. Even those who thought it looked cute and were going to see it were definitely not anticipating the surprise reveal of it being a literal masterpiece. Though if you were a fan of Clone High in 2014, which, uh, good for you. You probably saw Lord and Miller's names attached to the project and withheld your judgments. As much as these two chuckle f**ks grind my gears these days, there's no denying they're plenty talented and they're pretty much the only people on the planet who can make a Lego movie work. And worked it did. Let's talk about the actual film now. The Lego movie is not so much an advertisement for Lego, well it is, but a straight up love letter towards it and the countless childhoods and lives that have been positively impacted by Lego over the years, and using that as the basis for a tightly written story that, yes, may have some messages that appear to be cliche like believing in your Yourself, but also uses the mere concept of LEGO to amplify its main theme of conformity versus individual creativity. None of what the LEGO movie covers on the thematic side is uncommon in family-friendly animated movies, but the way it's done here through the use of LEGO, the toy for expressing your creativity with, helps to really sell its themes in a way that actually has a profound impact on basically every moviegoer, because pretty much everyone who watched the LEGO movie has played with LEGO before in some capacity, and tying in with the movie's other messages like strengthening the bonds between parents and their kids helps to sell the film's incredibly touching finale. Every time I re watch this movie and Emmett says, you are the special to Lord Business, I still get a little misty eyed and I know I'm not the only one. Also, the brain rot's taking its toll. It's such a fantastic ending. Of course, there is a little bit of irony in how the film promotes being a creative individual and not conforming to the consumer culture, when in actuality this is a massive ad for LEGO and actually had a massive impact on LEGO sales, so uh... 
oops. But I find the message powerful enough to know what the writer's true intentions were, and even though Lego is f expensive, there's rarely any toys like it that let your kids express their creativity in a near limitless capacity. This video is not sponsored by Lego, I'm not expensive enough, but the Lego movie isn't just a somber and emotionally resonant art house flick about the deep complexities of a children's toy, it's also one of the funniest movies I have ever watched. In fact, apart from the first season of Clone High, which still feels indescribably wrong to say out loud, I'd say this is the funniest thing Lord and Miller have ever written. This was just before the oversaturation of meta humor hit basically everything in Hollywood, and it feels so good to watch something that's incredibly meta from start to finish while not feeling low effort or insincere, or even remotely cynical. And there's no way you can talk about the Lego movie without mentioning its animation. It's a loving tribute to brick films. I can already hear the stop motion nerds clapping, because I am one and I'd show any attempts at making a homemade Lego movie if I could. The film hasn't aged a day and I still think it's the best looking movie in the franchise. There was so much effort and love poured into every frame to make it replicate stop motion. From the obvious stuff, like everything being a real Lego piece, to small stuff like the fingerprints and dents on the minifigures. It's a gorgeous film to look at. As said already, the Lego movie made a pretty big splash at the box office, but that wasn't the only thing that made it a success. A pretty impressive 12% increase in the sales of Lego sets long with an extra $100 million generated from home video sales proved that there was a lot of money to be made from a full-on Lego film franchise. And so long as the movies kept a consistent quality on par with or similar to the first movie, the future was looking pretty bright. The Lego Batman movie is one of the best Batman movies ever made specifically for this line. What is the password? Iron Man sucks. Honestly, not enough people appreciate the Lego Batman movie. Most people just say it's a good movie, not as good as the first Lego movie, but leave it at that. And generally, I don't see a lot of people talking about it, which is a shame because while the movie isn't on par of the first Lego movie, lacking a lot of the heartfelt goodness that movie had in spades and basically being a full-on comedy, this is straight up one of the funniest anime movies I've seen in a good while. The jokes per minute are off the damn charts, and a lot of it is just as charmingly meta as the Lego movie and makes good use of Batman's history for a lot of the jokes. Not to mention how this movie wonderfully explores the dynamic between Batman and the Joker, which, yep, yeah, I know, shocking concept, but it's fun and clearly written by people who love the characters. It's surprising how good of a character study this is of Bruce Wayne. Even when it's obviously taking the piss and trying to be funny, it remains solid and never insincere, which is something I really like about a lot of the humor in Lego Movie and Lego Batman. These films are incredibly self-referential and meta, yet they never subtract from the sincerity of the narrative or the film's messages. It never feels out of place or like every scene is trying to pull the rug out from under the viewer. Admittedly, this worked better in the Lego Movie because it actually took its time to slow down and have some serious scenes at points, but there's a massive difference here between Lego Batman and something like Velma or whatever, and it's great that as a parody, it's clearly made with love and it's a celebration of the source material rather than trying to ridicule it. A lot of parodies of popular things tend to fall into the trap of ripping into the thing they're parodying a bit too hard or just doing it specifically to make fun of it, whereas with Lego Batman, every reference to a part of Batman's history is treated with respect, even if it ends up being on the sillier side. Side note, I'm still kind of in shock at how good Zach Galifianakis is as the Joker, and I hope that it's some point it gets recasted in a different Batman project. I need more of Zach Galifianakis as the Joker, he just does this so well. The Joker in general is one of the best parts of the movie, which, wow, no surprise there. One thing I will say is that while I definitely respect how consistently funny and stupid the film is throughout its runtime, it definitely feels a lot more hyperactive than the Lego movie did. With a substantially faster pace and it's constantly moving and throwing stuff at the viewer to the point where it can kind of feel like sensory overload at points. In other words, a cartoon G video. And many, while liking the film, could sense some sort of complacency going on and that the humor, while there was certainly more of it this time around, kind of felt more of the same. Regardless, this doesn't change the fact that the Lego Batman movie was a critical and financial success, but it made substantially less than the Lego movie did, which wasn't a good sign given the film had a budget that was $20 million higher. And when you factor in marketing costs, it's likely that the film just about broke even. But don't take that from me. As for why this drop-off in numbers happened, well, the main reason is something we'll get into later, but it could also be a side effect of it being released during an insanely crowded week at the box office. Lego Batman and opened alongside Fifty Shades Darker and John Wick Chapter 2, which, while absolutely having a completely different target audience, are still two very high-profile releases in established franchises, and when you remember the obvious fact that children aren't the ones actually buying cinema tickets, you can see that there was quite a lot of competition. This certainly didn't spell doom for the Lego franchise, but in hindsight this was just the first in a pretty bad line of missteps when it came to the film's marketing, especially because they released yet another movie only a few months later.
I'm gonna assume that a lot of you are at least aware of Lego Ninjago. Not the movie, the TV show. While I stopped watching it years ago, I won't deny that out of all the Lego TV shows that have been released over the years, this is probably my favourite. This show went insanely hard for literally no reason whatsoever, and I can't help but love it. I remember the first three seasons being genuinely pretty decent, and it doesn't really care about the fact that it's a Lego show. It's more like an art style than something they actually take advantage of, and it had an actual story, with character development, rising stakes, and dramatic story reveals. If the show wasn't a Lego show and was given its own unique art style, I think a lot more people would be willing to give it a chance, but I haven't watched it in years and I have absolutely no idea what's happened since. If the show got bad or better, all I know is that there were ghosts at one point and a f***ing genie, so maybe I made the right call. Anyway, the success and popularity of the Ninjago TV show was noticed by Warner Brothers before the release of the Lego Movie, and a film was ordered in 2013. Then in 2014, after the Lego Movie released, it began to move along as a Lego Movie spin-off specifically about Ninjago. This was the biggest mistake they could have possibly made in the history of ever. It's not even like the movie was that bad, but there was so much working against this film from its conception that it's honestly impressive. First off, while it's cool that Ninjago actually got a movie, the film was basically a complete reboot of the series, wiping all of the character development, story progression, everything, and giving us a completely different story with characters that are now entirely one note. Another thing that wasn't appreciated was the typical Lego movie style not gelling well with Ninjago at all. Ninjago had its funny moments sometimes, but it took itself and its story pretty seriously, and juxtaposing the TV show of the movie, you can see a ton of problems. Not only are the jokes in the Ninjago movie far lazier because compared to the first Lego movie and Lego Batman they have substantially less to work with, but it's also a complete slap in the face to Phantom Ninjago. This is kind of like the Ninjago equivalent of Teen Titans Go, except that here I can actually understand some of the backlash and disappointment given this wasn't directly marketed as a baby show, and was a movie adaptation of a show that was still currently airing at the time of release. And the film not being nearly as funny as the previous installments while trying way too hard to be funny, given they had nothing to work with in comparison, also exposed a lot of people to how formulaic these movies were becoming, and how tired the shtick was becoming. What was originally a charming and fun execution of meta-comedy had quickly run sour, and unlike the Lego Batman movie, Ninjago just doesn't feel like it carries the same respect for its source material. Then there's the big f ups. Ignoring the fact that this was the second Lego movie to release in a single year, while also getting far worse reviews than its predecessors, not many people actually know what a Ninjago is. Ninjago was a popular TV show, yes, but not even close to being on the same level as Batman, who can carry a film's recognition and marketing based on brand recognition alone. Ninjago was just too niche of a franchise to make a movie about unless they had an insanely good marketing campaign that gave people a reason to check this movie out. But they didn't, and it showed. With all of these reasons combined, it was no surprise that Ninjago absolutely floundered at the box office, only bringing in a meager $123 million on a budget of $70 million, and taking into account the film's marketing costs, I don't think Ninjago managed to break even, which is never a good sign for any franchise. Within only three years, the Lego Movie franchise was not only dealing with fatigue due to people getting tired of a repetitive shtick when they have no material to work with, but they have also experienced their first ever box office flop due to a series of failures with the film's marketing and its less than stellar critical reception. The film itself isn't really that bad, it's without a doubt the worst in the franchise and really unfunny, and it was disappointing to see that not everything in the film was made out of Lego this time, which definitely took some of the appeal of its animation away, but it's it's still gorgeously animated and had some fun sequences, but it's not a film I want to rewatch anytime soon. And unfortunately, the next installment in the franchise would end up being the last. And while it wouldn't end up being the worst, it would be their biggest disappointment. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be honest, it takes a lot of restraint to save a joke about stepping on Legos until your fourth movie. Finally, five years after they released the Lego Movie, and two years after the release of Lego Batman and Ninjago, the Lego Movie 2 was released, and it was received with an astounding... Yeah, that was fine. And unfortunately, not many people cared about it. As far as sequels go, this could have been a lot worse. But as you watch the film, you can definitely tell that Lord and Miller weren't in the director's seats this time around, ignoring that they still wrote the movie, which had its own problems. And instead, the film was directed by Mike Mitchell, who would later go on to direct Kung Fu Panda 4. Okay, in hindsight, this movie was doomed. Lego Movie 2 just doesn't feel nearly as fresh as the first. And despite having so much more to work with compared to the Ninjago movie, you can feel the signature humor of these films becoming more and more forced. Now, instead of the jokes being playfully meta without bombarding the viewer with references, the majority of jokes in Lego Movie 2 are just reference jokes. And while way more of them land than miss, the open frustration about them not being able to use any Marvel characters is hilarious, it just doesn't feel right. The film feels way more cynical and jaded than its predecessor. A symptom 
them have plenty of hyper-meta self-referential comedies, and that was something the LEGO Movie managed to narrowly avoid thanks to the sincerity of its story. And while there's still some good messages here, nothing is executed with the sheer impact and tenderness of Emmett confronting Lord Business at the end of the first movie, and it's incredibly disappointing. What also caught a lot of people off guard was the surprise reveal of LEGO Movie 2 being a musical, and I'm not against this myself, I can tell this was done ironically and that they're in on the joke, but this definitely alienated plenty of people, and I can't say many of the songs were that memorable aside from Not Evil and Catchy Song. And also that song at the end where Benny sh**s on Radiohead, that was funny. LEGO Movie 2 has lots of big ideas and things it wants to do, but it very quickly buckles onto the weight of its ambition and falls back on its signature formula. And by this point, people had grown tired of the shtick. I think the main reason why LEGO Movie 2 barely broke even at the box office has to do with the fact that it's a sequel that took five years to make after two installments that, while not terrible, definitely tired people out when it came to the LEGO franchise. I believe that if they released LEGO Movie 2 first instead of LEGO Batman, it would have not only made way more money, but might have also led to the franchise going on for far longer, even if nothing about the film was changed and people didn't like it as much as the first. Making a direct sequel first should have probably been their priority in hindsight, but I guess that's what it comes down to. Hindsight. From their perspective, this was a highly profitable franchise that they could keep milking for all it was worth, and I don't blame them for thinking that given that it was 1. LEGO, and 2. The insane success of the first movie basically came out of nowhere, but a string of missteps in management and marketing went along with oversaturation quickly killed the franchise in only five years. LEGO Movie 2 was a disappointing sequel in every sense of the word, and once word of mouth began to spread, it further proved that the movie wouldn't have very strong legs, and it quickly fizzled out. It generated just under $200 million on a budget of $99 million, and after having two box office disappointments in a row, Warner Brothers decided it was time to cut their losses and finally wash their hands of the franchise before they lost even more money, letting their film rents for LEGO expire and then handing the franchise off to Universal, where the franchise currently lays dormant. <laughs> The future is looking pretty bleak for the LEGO film franchise. While a new movie is currently in development at Universal, details about it have been sparse and it doesn't look like we'll be getting any more info about it anytime soon. The two other LEGO movies that were in development before LEGO Movie 2's release were immediately shelved after LEGO Movie 2's ended its run. One of them was titled The Billion Break Race and was apparently meant to be a LEGO racing movie, but even before LEGO Movie 2's release, it was clear production on it was kinda hellish and the film wasn't looking too hot. The other film was a sequel to LEGO Batman, titled LEGO Super Friends, and it was going to focus on Batman Batman's relationship with the Justice League. Not a whole lot is known about it though, and production on it is unlikely to resume under Universal given they don't own the rights to DC or its characters. There was a spin-off TV show focusing on the character of Unikitty from the LEGO movie that ran from 2017 to 2020, but I don't really know anyone who's actually watched it, nor can I say for myself if it's any good. But this was the last official LEGO project under Warner Brothers, which is a little depressing honestly. It's insane just how badly Warner Brothers fumbled such an easy bag of a franchise. Even if the quality of all these films have remained the same, if they swapped around the order of release for LEGO Batman and Movie 2, and released Ninjago about a year after LEGO Batman, I doubt the franchise would be in such a dire state right now. Obviously there's going to be a point where people get tired of any franchise, but fatigue set in so early for LEGO and I think there was a lot more that could have been done with the franchise overall. Regardless, I still hold the original movie and LEGO Batman in high regard as some of the best animated movies to release in the past 10 years, and I hope that whatever they're currently cooking up over at Universal is at least decent. Anyway, that was a long rant about the fall of a film franchise based on LEGO, that's the end of the video, play Yakuza, goodbye.